Now we're going to have a look at the properties of the normal distribution. We have talked a little bit about these uh, in passing in the other sections of having a look at finding probabilities with the normal distribution, finding values given a probability in a normal distribution, and finding the mean and or standard deviation of the normal distribution. Um, but here we are going to try and summarise the properties that it has. So you have to know the following properties of the normal distribution and be able to apply them to a given situation. So in the normal distribution, the mean is equal to the median is equal to the mode. And if you remember from our section on skewness, that means that the normal distribution is symmetric. We also need to know that roughly 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. 95.5% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. And 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. Uh, and if we were to do it a hit with a histogram with very, very small uh, intervals, uh, we would end up with a bell-shaped curve. And just from that information that we have there, that means that if we have our mean in the middle here, within one standard deviation of the mean, either side, if I just shade that in, we would end up with, in this section here, we would have 68% of our data within two standard deviations of the mean, so that's going from this up to here. Oops, it's a bit hard to see that now. Let me just redo that. Just colour in the end part. So in this, including the part in the middle as, as well. So from here to here, within two standard deviations of the mean. So here we're adding on two standard deviations and we're taking off two standard deviations we would hope end up with 95.5 percent of the data if it was following the normal distribution and then within three standard deviations of the mean we would end up with 95 percent of the data so adding on three standard deviations and taking off three standard deviations we would end up with 99.7 percent of our data which it brings me back to a comment that i made on a previous video where i was talking about the realisticness of the mean uh, when we found it if we are given values like 15 and 4 and we end up with a mean of 102 and our standard deviation is only three it's not realistic that we would actually find a probability for being smaller or bigger than those values it's likely to only give us an answer of zero or one so when you're thinking about the realisticness of finding a value remember those facts also remember that the entirety of this area here because we're talking because the area is the probability that means that the total area underneath the curve is going to equal one uh, and also the data should tail off at each end so you can see here that it's decreasing on both sides so we're going to have a look at an example of how we can uh, explore this a little bit more uh, and also how it might come up in a question. So here we have a machine cuts butter into blocks for packaging. It is set to produce blocks with a weight that is normally distributed with a mean of 20, 227 grams. So we're looking at a normal distribution with a mean of 227 grams and a standard deviation of 7.5. Block of butter produced by the machine is found to have a mass of 260 grams. Is there evidence that the machine is faulty? So we're going to have a look. 
within these three bounds that we have. So we're going to have, and usually we would either use two standard deviations of the mean or three standard deviations of the mean. In this case, we're going to have a look at three standard deviations because we haven't been specified to use a certain uh, uh, a certain amount. So the reason why we are doing it, sorry, the reason why we are doing this is that we would expect 99.7% of the data within three standard deviations of the mean. This can also be written, and sometimes you might see it in questions written this way, as mu plus minus three sigma. So sometimes in questions you might see it written like that. Now if we were to do it with these values, we'd have 227 plus three times 7.5. So in our normal calculator part, we're gonna have 227 plus three times 7.5, which gives us 400, sorry, 249.5, and 227 minus three times 7.5. So this time we're taking off three standard deviations. And that gives us 204.5. So we're expecting 99.7% of our data to be in between those two values. They found a block of butter that has a mass of 260 grams, which is outside the range of those two values, which means that the answer is yes, the, prob the, the machine is probably faulty. So yes, the machine is probably faulty as 260 grams is not within three standard deviations of the mean. Let's have a look at another example. So here we've got a library opens at 9 a.m. and closes at 9 p.m. A consultant reports that the time spent in a library by a user can be modelled using a normal distribution, just going to write this down again, x squiggle n, with a mean of 65 minutes and a standard deviation of 20 minutes. Could this be applied to a person who enters the library at 8 p.m.? Well, we can have a look at the maximum and the minimum time that somebody is likely to spend in the library. Again, we're going to be using three standard deviations of the mean. So we're going to have 65 plus three times 20, and we're gonna have 65 minus three times 20. Well, that gives us 125, and this gives us just five. Now, if they're entering the library at 8, if they were to spend 125 minutes in there, so 8 p.m. plus 125 minutes, well, the 60 minutes in an hour, so that means that we've got 2 hours, 5 minutes, that would be 10.05 p.m. And if we have 5 minutes, 8 p.m. plus 5 minutes, that would give us 8.05. So for the lower end of our predicted time for them to leave that's fine but at the upper end the library would have been closed for an hour and five minutes so the answer is uh, no the model cannot be used as the max time they can 
spend is only 60 minutes. If they enter at 8 p.m., they can only spend 60 minutes maximum in there. Uh, and if you have a think about it, the mean time for someone to spend in there is 65 minutes. And we're saying, well, they only actually have 60 minutes. So under half, so under 50% of people are going to actually just follow this model still. So under 50% of people can still be modelled using this. Now, to be more precise, we would have to go back into our statistics function. Dist norm NCD. We're saying that someone's staying less than 60 minutes. So minus 99999. 60 for the upper. The, meet, the standard deviation is 20 minutes. And the mean is 65 minutes. So actually, we're talking about 40, this 50, under 50%. We're talking about 40.1% of people that can still be modelled using this distribution. The other 60%-ish of people that would enter the library would not be able to be modelled using it. So the model isn't going to work for everybody, so they shouldn't be using it. So then we're asked, what is the latest that someone can enter the library uh, and have the model apply to them? Well, as we said, the maximum amount of time that we're expecting someone to spend in the library is 125 minutes. If it closes at 9pm, we're wanting them to come in 125 minutes before that. So that's two hours and five minutes before 9pm, which is going to be 6.55pm. So now I'd like you to pause the video and give the now you try a go. Be careful because this time they have specified that they are wanting us to use the mean plus or minus two lots of the standard deviation, not three. So hopefully you paused the video and gave the now you try uh, a go. So this time we've got an ambulance uh, control centre responds to emergency calls in a rural area. The response time in T minutes is defined as the time between answering of an emergency call at the centre and the arrival of an ambulance at the given location of the emergency. Anita wants to find the mean and standard deviation of the response time. She asks Peng to record a random sample of 80 emergency calls and Peng uh, found the following summary statistics. So we found that the mean was 6.31 minutes and the standard deviation was 6.9 minutes. Peng told Anita that only one out of 80 values exceeded 20 minutes. So we're trying to explain, using the mean plus or minus two lots of the standard deviation, why Peng's conclusion that T was not normally distributed was likely to be correct. So in blue there, you can see that I've done the mean plus two lots of the standard deviation and got 20.11 minutes. And I've done the mean minus two lots of the standard deviation and got minus uh, 7.49 minutes. So using that first fact there, one out of 80 values exceeded 20 minutes. Well, we would be expecting 95.5% of the data from our facts up here to be within two standard deviations of the mean. And as we talked about before with the normal distribution, because that's talking about the central 95% of the data, so 95.5% of the data, we would then expect the remaining 4.5% to be split evenly between below that and above that. So we would expect 2.25% to be below and 2.25% to be above our 20.11%. However, if we only have 1 out of 80, which is 0.0125, we only actually have 1.25% above 20 minutes. So that doesn't fit. And as I've put there, we would expect 2.25%. And also, if we think about the lower bound in the context of what we're talking about, that means that the ambulance has arrived seven almost eight minutes before the actual emergency call went out, which doesn't make any sense at all. 
So also, as an ambulance cannot have a negative response time, the lower part of our model also does not fit. And you could even add on there saying uh, we also could not have 2.25% below uh, minus 7.49 minutes. So you have to be careful with the context of the question because sometimes a negative value does make sense, but in the context of this one here, it does not make sense. So please bear in mind, whenever you're having to say whether you think the normal distribution could work or not, you need to try and make a comparison between the mean, mo median and mode. And usually that will, you would have had to find those earlier on in the question. So if you've been asked to find the mean, median and mode and then make a comment on the distribution, if they are similar to each other, remember that the experimental data might be slightly different from the population data. So if they're almost the same, then you could say it probably is symmetrical. But if one is bigger or smaller than the others, then it's not going to be symmetrical. And also having a look within one standard deviation of the mean, remember that's below and above. Two standard deviations of a mean, again, two below, two above. And three standard deviations of the B mean, again, three below and three above. If we have those percentages that we need. If we don't have those percentages of the data within those catchment ranges, then it's unlikely that, again, the data is going to be normally distributed. Thank you very much for listening.